Should we get on with this webinar? Everybody's in, yeah? Everybody's in. Let's, let's crack on. The, the, the title today is um, uh, The Best Property Strategy in 2024. Uh, we've got uh, three broad things to talk about. Let's dive straight in, shall we? Um, we're talking about having some money to invest, putting it into property. So you've already decided property. You know, you've got over um, Bitcoin, stocks and shares. Um, Gold, whatever yeah. it is, we decided on property, and there's there's loads of things, loads of things that you could do. Um, sometimes it's the the shiny penny syndrome. We understand it. It's not like a um, a dig or anything. There's loads of options, and they can all seem like they're a really good idea. So before we start talking about what our favorite favorite strategy is, should we talk about a few options? You know, yeah. clients come to Adam and they're. They, they, they're thinking, well, we could do this or this or this or this. And we do we do various things. You know, we, we've written a list of your options here. And, uh, you know, we could do this, we could do that. Um, but we don't at the moment. Mm -hmm. you know, we, 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 we concentrate on one, two strategies. I said one, two, with three fingers up. One, two strategies. And um, they're, they're, they're broadly interchangeable. Landlords can sort of flick back between the two. If um, you've got any questions at any point, just please feel free to pop them in the in the group chat, the meeting chat, um, and we'll read those questions out and answer them mm -hmm. in the in, towards the end. Um, yeah, let's, let's crack talk on. on different different strategies. What what do people say? Number I think number one is service accommodation. They talk about like what should I do? Service accommodation. I think service that's what. Service accommodation, yeah. flipping. Yeah. Um, commercial to residential conversions, that, uh, HMOs, yeah. single lets. Yeah. Um, and maybe uh, uh, people talk about LHA. The yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. So not just service accommodation, but having vulnerable LHA tenants in and um, and, and renting to those for a higher local housing that's authority it. allowance. Yeah. So let's go one at one at one. So flip flips. We can sort of. We did a, a big a webinar last week. It'll be online now. You can find a link to it. If we stick a um, a link to that uh, recording, you can go back to that flips. For me. Uh, they're neither good nor bad in terms of strategy. They're just a totally different strategy. It's a job. If you need, job, yeah. if you want, if you if you want to work and you want to make some money, then it's a good job to make some money. Yeah, it'll mm -hmm. definitely make you some money if you get it right. Um, <coughs> we, there's we, some risks. We, we, we source property to order for people. You know, my team are out there every day sourcing. We're sourcing a flip project for a, for a client right now. I think he's viewing it today. Um, my sorcerers, you know, that's what that guy wants to do. Yep. Fine. Fine. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's what's good for him, that's great. Yeah. Uh, it's not what I would prefer, my preference, but I'm at a different part of my journey than yeah. he is. It will make you some money that you can put into what what we find with most of our landlords, of course, the landlords that they're keeping, but when they're thinking about what should I do, what's the strategy, they want to build something long term. They want to build wealth for themselves and maybe um, you know, future generations. Um, they want to be able to retire easily with security. Mm. That means you've got to build a, an income. To be honest, though, without with, having to work, with, it's, it's, it's passive pleasure, income. Like if you're talking about a, a more expensive house, and to the sort of four or five hundred thousand pound purchase mm. prices, there's some opportunities there right now. A friend of mine showed me something in Nottingham that uh, the vendor. Reduced by 150 grand mm -hmm. the asking price. Yep. I mean, we're talking massive money to do it up and everything, and it will be worth a lot. But the mo the cost of buying that house to live in with a residential mortgage right now is high. There's definitely so some there's some really there. good opportunities yep. in the higher end market of flips. I wouldn't touch the lower end myself. When we high. get on to market trends, mm. that's one of the trends. So the, the 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 three things we're going to talk about here are you know we're going to talk about some um, some strategies, some different strategies. Tell you what our favourite one is and why. Talk about the trends that are sort of behind that thinking and then tell you how to do it well. Minimise your income and maximise your risk. That's what that's the three sections for today. And when we talk about the trends, the reduction in big house prices is creating an opportunity if you want to flip something. Mm, big time. But it's just different. You know, you're not building up wealth long term, you're not building a portfolio, you're not building something that you can um make money out of without you know, in your sleep. That, that's not that. So flips don't fit in for this. If you, if you want to get involved in flips, then um, fine, but it's just a different thing. Sure. So if you're looking for hassle-free, risk-free, uh, relatively passive income, let's call it that, uh, next thing on the list that people talk about a lot is serviced accommodation. Adam, what, uh, mm. can, can we do serviced accommodation? Um, so a lot of people think the, the flips are the most hassle-free, risk-free thing. 
because they don't think they haven't got to deal with tenants. Um, But realistically speaking, you don't know how long it's going to take to sell it. You've got a lot of holding costs potentially there. Um, They need a hell of a lot of capital going into it. It's a a lot of risk. That's a lot of risk. And um, a tenant, a good tenant, you might never speak to them for for years. Whereas the builder on a flip project, you speak to them every day. And if you don't, it's all going to go wrong. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, service accommodation, um, it's, it's hassle. There's, there's work to be done. Definitely, you, you, it's, it's, it's an operational running business. A, running a hotel. Yeah, so it's probably running out running a And I spoke to someone yesterday who, for the last few years, has been kind of specialising in service accommodation for herself and for some private clients. And she said the demand's waning because the trends have changed. People actually prefer a hotel kind of experience um, when they when they go away, and or people are going abroad more. They don't want yeah. to go away. So wait, want to city yeah. break yeah. abroad. Yeah. So waning demand, mm. operational hassle, and coming on the um, it was, it's been in the news over the last week. Um, it, there's going to be a new planning category created just for short term lets, and councils will be given the opportunity to veto it on Article Four. So what it basically means is, if you've got a short term let, you've got to declare it. You've got to get planning permission for it, and they can turn you down. It's no surprise that starts yeah, happening. That's happening again. And as soon as you get that, they're not just the special licensing and planning, they will be all over the compliance. Because so many, yeah. really, really we, we see it. Um, we've got a, a house in multiple occupation. It's absolutely regulated to the nines. It's got all sorts of licenses, fire and whatnot. But you can rent that single that house, just a house, to 10 people. Uh, mm. Who are going to have a stag party, get pissed, and yeah, yeah. you know, um, um, and, and smoke outside, and, and you know, fire? Don't rate. have any of the yeah. same regs. Yeah, yeah, and they don't have any of the same regs. They don't know the building. Yeah, when you've got a stable tenancy base in an HMO, they're not going to. There's also the social side of it. A friend of mine um, lives in a part of Nottingham where you wouldn't expect a service accommodation to pop up. Mm-hmm. It's just a, a suburb. Yeah, um, and the yeah, her ne- semi-detached house. The neighbours turned it into a Airbnb. an Airbnb, and there's parties every week. Yeah. So, look, I, yeah. I think that that is That's hassle. Yeah. That would be hassle. So service accommodation, we're not fans of that. It has to be said that when we sort of reveal, I'm sure there's no surprise what our favourite uh, strategy is going to be. There's a few few sort of variations of it. We'll talk about that, the trends and actually how to make the best of it. But um, it has to be said that if you take our favourite strategy, you can, well, I've got a couple where they're service accommodation. So we, we, we rent them out to a third party. I would not take the operation. Yeah, you don't run it. Doing it. I don't run it. Yeah. I don't run it. But I'll get a slightly higher rent because of it. And somebody runs my single let property as a service accommodation and I take a slightly extra margin. They do all the hassle and they take the bigger margin. Mm. Um, and if you wanted to, the kind of you know, the, the properties we like, you could probably run them as a service accommodation. Uh, next one. Um, yeah, the difference in that is they pay you, I think, £400 Per room, they pay so it's a three bed house. They pay you twelve hundred pounds a month. Correct. If you did let it as a single let, you'd probably eight, be getting eight fifty nine. Eight, eight fifty nine. That's yeah. the difference. Yeah. And but you've got any operator, they give you a guarantee all your maintenance. Correct. So that's nice. We've nice. got a couple yeah, of clients. Yeah, yeah. We call them clients. A couple of companies that, yeah. that take property from us on that yeah. basis. Yeah. Their postcodes that they prefer in different cities are changing all the time mm-hmm. um, because of the difference in demand in certain areas. Yeah. You know, then, as one area has loads of stuff happening contractors coming in then suddenly that area's gone and then they just yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not necessarily well, it's hardly ever holiday makers or you know people it, it's it's contractors it's uh people not necessarily in hard hats and high vis doing the roads or building an amazon warehouse well it, it, it often is but it could be somebody doing an it contract and there's you know 200 extra workers doing something something for three years or whatever and they need they need places to stay mm. and it's cheaper for the company to sort this out than go put people in hotels so that's it um next one is and, and we hear this a lot now local housing allowance taking advantage of the fact that local housing allowance is higher and creating some kind of either small hmo or s- semi-serviced accommodation or at least specialized accommodation take advantage of the enhanced payment that LHA offers and really specifically honing on that. And what we're talking about here is all different ways to increase the income in your, what would otherwise would be a vanilla buy select. Here's your normal two or three bed vanilla box. How do I get more rent out of it? Let's let's rent, rent it out to local housing allowance, vulnerable people get the enhanced payments. And some of them could be quite chunky. You can be looking at 
um, you know, well, at the very, very extreme end, twelve hundred pounds a week. Mm. You know, what I mean, that's that's extreme. You'll be having to be a live-in person. You'd have to provide a carer <coughs> or a supervisor or something like that to get those kind of monies. Uh, and of course, you're going to pay their wages. And if you have to provide one carer, it's actually three because they mm. work eight hours and yeah. eight, eight, eight. And you would probably need four on the books because they need a holiday and all sorts. So, you know, it, it's very intensive. So um, that's at one end. Right at the other end, it's just um, you know, two single guys, homeless, and you put them in there. Um, do you like that? Not really. Not, well, not me. It's yeah. an opinion, isn't it? Yeah. People have their their own way of doing it. And I know people who do it. And for me, um, well, again... There's well, different rules so. around financing as well. Rules, yeah, <clears throat> financing, absolutely. It, it doesn't make things easy. The thing that I notice is it's quite a lot of, you, know, you might very well say, and I, I, we've had clients come to us, you know what, I only want to rent this to two single guys over the age of this that get the enhanced payment and therefore it's just a two bedroom house, but they'll take that room and they'll take that room and I'm going to get mm. yeah, £1,500 a month rather than the rent of 700 That's brilliant. Well, now you've got to go find those two guys. And there's not actually that many of them. The demand isn't there. Um, it's not that much. I mean, there's a bit of demand, but it's not there, not that much. And then when one moves out, or they have a fight, or they get back together with their wife and leave, you've got to find it again. And if you don't, the whole thing falls down. Uh, there is extra rules, regs, management thing around it. Um, it just seems a lot of extra operational hassle. Definitely. Um, the other, other thing is you sometimes if you've got another person in the middle and that happens sometimes so you've got these people in your house but there's another managing agent or I wouldn't even call them that a facilitator you don't know quite who's living in your house no. and I've, I've done it myself where a company it's essentially a company let and they'd set themselves up as a company or a charity and um, they'd put this person in the house and there's another person in the house and somebody checking and what they essentially were was the person who was checking was the person that used to live in the house. Oh, great. And the person who now lives in the house has just come out of prison. So what happens is the person who's just come out of prison lives in the house mm. and then moves on to become a checker if you're on the part of the charity and you come around once a, once a week or once a day or whatever it is and check on the person who's just moved out of prison. Guess what? Mm. Um, in one of the houses, they're a drug addict and they've just come out of prison and the person who's checking is a drug dealer. Mm. Yeah, that great. worked. And the other one was a prostitute and... Um, kicked out by so, some pimp and uh, ended uh, up with a, yeah. This is the kind of thing you get into I when in the last couple of years people have that. tried to overcomplicate. Well, there you are. Things so much yep. just to try to just to try and make a squeeze cash. an extra bit of cash flow out of it. Yeah. And because also they get themselves all bogged down in um, oh, the media, uh, the landlords, everyone out, the government are out to get us. Oh, yeah. It used to be so easy; we'd have to yeah. put up with all of this stuff. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good, because 20 years ago, people were taking the right make and people were renting out houses in horrible conditions. Horrible condition. We'll talk about some of the trends. When we come on to trends, we'll talk about licensing and regeneration areas and yeah. upping the standards, because I think it's a good thing. It's going to make, really? as a landlord, it's going to make you more money. So It's going to increase the value of your house, where yeah. all the, the rubbish landlords are forced to improve the, what were substandard housing. Yeah. I've got Wait. another one written down in terms of another strategy. This gets mentioned a lot. I'm going to take a commercial building and I'm going to convert it into mm. houses, Saves flats. Saves me some stamp duty. Yeah, really yeah. good idea that. Mm. And um, you get loads of clients want those. Some clients come in to you say, yeah, well, I'm looking out for those kind of deals. What do you think about that? I think they're not as easy to find as people will have you believe. Really hard to find. It's a, it's a really easy topic for a training course that you can sell. Um, we don't sell training. We, we, we don't like all of that sort of stuff. We don't sell it. We don't create training courses. But if we were going to, you know, it sounds like a really, well, that sounds quite easy. Mm -hmm. And I'll save some money here and there's mm -hmm. always a demand there and there's loads of empty commercial stuff. And yep. you can't just go and find a commercial thing like that and suddenly it's two flats. So oh, you can't. And um, if you do, and you, you'll see them on right move. I'm, um, um, Arthur, we started looking on Rightmove. This is my 12 year old son, I'm super proud. He's looking on Rightmove and uh, he found a development site. I said, Look, there's a development site on Rightmove. I didn't even look at it, but it can't be any good, can it? Like, what, what, <laughs> what goes on Rightmove? Like, he's got to have sat there for years. Otherwise, yeah. if, 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 if it's good, it goes like that before it even hits, Again, hits it's the another, market. It's another complicated Same with all these strategy. Things. It involves a lot of planning, architects, yeah. 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 time, yeah. all of that sort of thing. Well, the yeah. Jester's Builders just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, 
yeah, it's just it's just not that easy and quick and straightforward. I like to do things that are easy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think, you, uh, you, I think you, uh, and there are some people that think um, you know, you've got transferable skills, you're, you're a, a project manager that does you know, other projects, IT projects, or delivers mm. delivers a, a new product projects, whatever, whatever it is, um, and that's a transferable skill, but that's not you know, contracts and looking after builders. It, it, it is in some ways, but if you're an absolute rank amateur at doing these things, I, that would not be my first go-to. It's capital intensive. Do you know what the biggest thing for me here on, on, on a development project, and we've got the opportunity to do development projects. I I could, and I've, I've, I've done the numbers, more than back of fag packet, which is unusual for me. I normally am just, that'll do. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I, I've written, written spreadsheets and run this backwards and forwards. It's the amount of time. Yeah, You've got to find the building and then you've got to buy it. It's not as easy to buy because you're doing it um, subject to planning. You've got to put the planning in. You've got to be really clear on uh, before you put the planning, what's there because what you're going to reuse, what you're going to change, asbestos report, all those, all those things, mm -hmm. so many variables, it takes longer to get the thing bought. Then you've got to get the planning, change the planning from outline to detail, to get your building regs, line up your builder, get your four different quotes, get your mm. master contract. Well, it's so a, by the time you, it's, it's a year, a year, a year and a half, so and you've just got the keys. We are converting um, a project for a client at the minute. He brought the, the building to us, it was one that he already owned. And he, with all, he did all the planning himself, got all the architect drawings himself. We attached a contractor to it and he spotted loads of problem, uh, flaws in the, in the, in the architect drawings. 100 mil, um, 100 mil everywhere. He said, if but, I do that, yeah, current it's building not to current regs. Current yeah. regs 150, which you think that's no big deal. Just yeah. put another 50 mil in. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, when you put the 50 mil in, you know that door, that door, now it's got to be, it has got to be that wide for building regs. Just encroaches by 100 million, you can't fit the door in anymore. What are we going to do? Ah. All sorts of stuff like that. Anyway, it's hard work. So, end to end, by the time you've found it, got it through conveyancing, planning, building regs, sign off and approval before getting going, um, found a contract to get the thing done, got it moved in, got it signed off, got it snagged, got it refinanced with a specialist lender, you're probably two and a half years. Yeah. Now, if I take the same capital that that took and put it through a load of little vanilla buy to lets, I'd have done 10 by to lets, maybe 20 by to lets with the same money in the amount of time. Potentially. Loads easier. I mean, it's a little bit harder to find 20 houses than one, maybe. Maybe not. Yeah. We find them pretty easy. When Should we come on to our favourite, our favourite yeah. strategy? Vanilla. Vanilla by to lets. Vanilla by to lets. Boring, dull by to lets. Yeah. Yeah. That's our favourite strategy. And <laughs> there's more to it than that. We're going to talk about where the exact properties yeah, there's, there's a gamut of, 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 of options, but keeping it simple, there's so much value in keeping it simple. Cookie cutter, rinse and repeat, whatever you want to say, it's, 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 um, you can understand it. Everybody lives in a house, you kind of understand it. Yeah. Um, a vanilla two or three bedroom box is very little that can go wrong. In term, it, you know, of course, the roof can blow off and the boiler can blow up. It can have some damp, a pipe can burst. Mm -hmm. you know, there's serious things that can go wrong, but it can't have a cladding problem and set on fire and yeah. it can't have um, a multiple occupation section 257 license thrown and it. it can't have a um, uh, you know it's extra article 40 just a house yeah it's, it's, it, there's very little that can go wrong in the grand scheme of things when you just look at all the other options there um, easy to find easy to understand easy to quantify the cost of buying it any work that needs doing, I can tell you now, and you, you'd agree with me, a new boiler's going to cost you under two grand, isn't it? Yeah. Dun, 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 yeah, I'm happy to, about 1,400 quid to 2,000, whatever, whatever. Easy. Easy to find the right finance for. Yeah. And easy, then easy, easy to sell it if you want. Easy to, so you've always got uh, a, a high street lender who will give you finance on it. You've always got someone who will want to rent it, a normal working person, a family, what have you, not, not strange, complicated tenants or people who only want to rent for the weekend or whatever. Mm. Um, yeah, there's always a builder who will take it on because it's not an overcomplicated project. It's, it's quantifiable, it's easy almost, to price almost up. A, almost a handyman, not quite, yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, guess what? There's more of them for sale than any other kind of property. Mm -hmm. That's just what's on the books of every estate agent yeah. in the country. Now, if you are thinking, what is the best strategy? What you're actually thinking is, what's going to get me, probably, what's going to get me the best return 
for, and hopefully you're thinking about this, for least hassle and risk. And they're two different things. Hassle is your headspace. It's like, oh my God, there's just so much things to manage, whether they're a risk or not, they probably are. But risk is something like, it's that unseen thing. It hangs over you forever. And when it comes out, it's like, boom, that's, that's risk. Um, leaving money in for a long time or, or over time, um, having something that has to happen or something that has to marry up time-wise or contractual-wise, they're all risks. So for us, this vanilla buy to let, a simple two or three bedroom house that you rent out to a family on a normal assured short hold tenancy um, is the best return for what can be very, very little hassle if you mm -hmm. get it right and relatively little risk. I mean, <clears throat> any risk that you identify, if you're not happy with it, almost all of them for a, for a cost, which isn't unreasonable, can be insured against. You insure yeah, your house, you can get a survey with this, got PI insurance, you can get rent and legal insurance, you can get malicious damage cover, you know, all these things cost pence, you know, really per day, you know, £2.50 a week sort of thing for malicious damage cover, uh, uh, rent and legal cover. So it's, it's all that. Now, the next, the next thing is when, you, when you're looking for the best strategy, and yield has got to be the thing, the return has got to be there. So, okay, we're saying buy to let, vanilla buy to let, it's, it's relatively risk free compared to the other, other things. Um, the other thing that has happened in the last two years is buy to let, two years ago, buy to let was dead. Yeah. 9% yeah. payable. That's what sent people out on the search for serviced accommodation or LHA or you know, trying to really grind, grind, it, grind it out so that they got that extra yield. Well, oh, guess what? Bartlett's come back. Bartlett's back. Rate, rates are down to a, a, an absolute workable level. Four and five percent is coming. You'll still see for the next three months um, some banks talking about rates going up and down. I think I think rates, they're talking about rates, payable rates, not Bank of England base rate, payable rates going up over the next two months. So they yeah. came down yeah. and now they're going up. Now they came down a percent, they're going up 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And all that is, the up is simply so that uh, banks, the bank that's put it up by 0.1 drops down 20 places on the league table. They don't get as many inquiries. They're just doing it to moderate their demand because otherwise they'll run out of money or not have enough people to service it. It's just so that they keep their service level agreements, their timeframes, tight that's 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 the only reason things are going up there is there is nothing's definite in life it's almost certainly a rating rate decrease coming in the next three to four months isn't mm, there? So. there's possibly two this year it's, as soon as that comes in you're going to see another down and another down and that's that's not the margin of the lend, lender it's just the actual bank of england base rate coming down so things are workable now you've got a steady let's call it a five percent payable mm -hmm. yeah people yeah. Works at five percent. It's probably going to be sub five percent, and I would imagine we. I think we're going to settle about four, four point two five. Yeah. yeah. Um, so buy to let works. Vanilla buy to let works. And it works best if you're able to source something that you can add value to when you buy it. Something that needs some kind of a renovation, so you can add some value straight away, create some equity. Mm. Um, then oh, you can just give it ahead. You're, you're on point three. True. It's all right. Good point. It's all right. We should manage there. Come up, come up. We should rehearse this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there we go. Vanilla Bytel. I think we should just really, really quickly, before we move on to some trends we think you can take advantage of, if, you, if you're with us, you're settling on just the Vanilla Bytelet. You don't have to just call it the boring Vanilla Bytelet. It doesn't have to be boring. I, I quite like boring. Yeah, I, I, I said uh, once and it's kind of stuck. Um, if you want excitement, take up skydiving. Who, who <laughs> wants a, who wants a excitement? Who wants a roller coaster ride with their um, long term investments? Yeah, I think <laughs> someone's. I want boring. Um, so, yeah, there's things we can do. We'll talk about the trends you can take advantage of. We can talk about how to maximise income, minimise risk. That's what we're going to come on to. Just before we disappear onto the next topic or the next section, just talk really quickly about HMOs because that is okay. a strategy that yeah. it's a valid strategy. It will increase your yield. And for us, HMOs are like almost like buy to let plus. If you get it right, buy a house, right area, do all the right things in the right way, it is slightly more operational hassle. Of course. But you can manage it. Mm -hmm. It's slightly more complicated, there's slight more risk. But it's a it's a slight step and we can manage it, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, well, we, we manage about 250 to 300 HMO rooms um, that we've sourced and renovated for clients. And yes, I hear the headaches in the office that the lettings team have to put up with. Um, gripes from tenants, someone's moved my washing out of the washing machine, day-to-day -day stuff like that. But actually finding that property, converting it to the current regulations, um, moving tenants in, collecting your rent and refinancing it, yeah, it's not much more complicated than, than a normal buy-to-let project. It just requires some more money. Yeah, a bit more money, more capital. You will get that back and you return. Um, there's licensing, there's rules, there's regs. But in a standard buy-to-let, there's licensing, and, rules and regs. And we, and like, know. we like all of those things. Anything that's a barrier to entry mm -hmm. yep. for, for people is good for us because yep. we're not worried about that. Correct. Just do it to the, the regs. Barriers to entry, bake in build in and, and retain value. Um, so if you if you own a house in multiple occupation, you may or may not have to have planning permission, depending whether you're in an Article 4 area or not. And a council can decide overnight, they decide overnight, it takes a year to come in consultations and whatnot, to make an area Article 4. Now, Derby's an area that hasn't got it, Nottingham's an area that has, both areas that are local to us. I've got HMOs, clients of ours have got HMOs in Derby without Article mm -hmm. 4. We've built them to the right regs, of course, because you, you just open yourself up to all sorts of problems if you don't. As soon as Article 4 comes into Derby, which it will, the values will rise and they'll stay because there's a barrier to entry now. In Nottingham, it's crystallised values at a higher level than the way they were when Article 4 came in. Uh, I've heard you say, Adam, that one HMO is like, what do you say, how many, how many by to let? Three, three, three by to let. For yeah. cash flow, three, four, if you're doing it, cash, Purchase, refurb, refinance, it's equal to three, the amount of money you tie up across three buy to lets yeah. and the refinance your money back out. Um, yeah, three times the, the, the cash flow after all your running costs each yeah. month. Yeah, so you put more money in. Do it all in one project in pretty much this slightly longer, the kind of, month or two longer to, to, yeah. to do the one buy to let project. The kind of client it suits is the kind of client that's got a definite income ambition a pot of cash, probably a sizable pot of cash, and you look and say, do you know what, in two years I can get you three, four, five, whatever HMOs, it'll bring in six grand a month. That is what you told me you want. You've got the money to do it, we'll do it, and then we'll take a breath at that point and mm. you decide what you want to do. You've got, the, you've got the options, but I can hit your target now, quickly, done. That, that suits that. Uh, I, I personally, I think that every landlord who is set on building a buy to let portfolio should know how to put an our house and multiple occupation <clears> together. Because <throat> um, if you're serious about building a portfolio, it's really useful to be able to drop an HMO in every five to 10 properties, depending, so that you I get think, a bigger yeah. rent to cover, which keeps your refinancing going right, if that's what your strategy is. In my opinion as well, I think you'll, you'll agree. Um, stay away from creating student HMOs. Mm because of the purpose-built blocks mm. in every city now, student mm. city coming up, actually got a friend that works for a letting agent that really all they do is student lets. Mm. Um, and she was telling me this morning that usually there's an uptake in January for people signing up to a, a student house for the September of this year. She said this year's really Nottingham. didn't cut in Nottingham, did it come? There's loads of houses that they haven't let because people are moving to the blocks. Don't Even in the their house. second or third year. Yeah, they don't yeah. want the house um, as much as they used to. Yeah. And so, you know, I was talking to her about transit, you know, helping her, you should have to have a conversation with the landlords to transition them to, to working professionals. Totally. And um, there'll be lower rents. Yeah. And there's difference with the bills then because a student house, yep. they expect the bills to be, you know, their obligation, mm -hmm. whereas a working professional market, mm -hmm. It's, it's usually bills included within the rent. There's also, as soon as you put working professionals in, even one in a student house, which I've seen some landlords yeah, have to mix to, it. don't really want to mix yeah. it, but as soon as you do that, you've got to pay council tax. Mm. Students are exempt from council tax. Council tax. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, just uh, a little bit of an aside point. So yeah, but HMOs, if you're going to do it, target working people. I okay, think. so we've talked about strategies. We've identified what our favorite strategy is as a headline, vanilla by to lets. But I think we can add a few different flavours to vanilla. We've got some chocolate chip in there. We've got some <laughs> honey nut. <laughs> honeycomb, right? Honeycomb. Yeah, fair play. Good, yeah. good analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, because actually, if you do it right, 
it can get, I wouldn't say exciting, I don't want it to be exciting, but it can get to be um, safe. We can, we, we, we can, we can, we can um, push it better than the normal landlord who just takes the vanilla buy to let off the shelf and rents it out, which I like, it still works. Um, we said we're going to talk about some trends. Mm -hmm. So if we identify some trends, up or downs, uh, and then when we are taking our vanilla and adding the strawberry sauce on top, we can make sure that the right trends are the sauce that we're putting on, take advantage of them. So I'm really, good. I'm really going down that. You are, right? Yeah. So, so I, I think that one of the trends is the de-Londonification of the UK. Yeah. Uh, Levelling up, whatever you want to call it, capital growth for a long time was down south. London focused, sure. you know, yeah. and as and as as things as money comes up the country, as you know, Manchester is a very different place than it was yeah, so twenty years Leeds. ago. So is Leeds, yeah. Birmingham, um, Newcastle. Money is getting put into those areas, and that makes a difference. Massively, yeah. Um, well, we've I, seen I, it alone in in what is it now? Five and a half, six years that we've been sourcing property in South Yorkshire. Mm. We've seen the prices double. Yeah. In the areas that we buy there. Yeah. And we saw it because in Because that was that. happening then. The money was going in there. We were saying to Fancy then there's, there's money right now, this we'll look at this deal and there's perhaps not a massive amount of comparables for an end valuation after a renovation. However, mm -hmm. you hold it for a couple of years, you what wait and see what happens yes. because of the money that's powering into the area. Yeah. And we know that I know it personally, I was in Northampton when it happened. So we could buy a house for fifty grand in Northampton. That house is now worth Two fifty. Yeah, that's a three three hundred thousand pounds now. Not all of them, but yeah, definitely three fifty. Mm -hmm. Some of them two seven five, two eighty, three hundred. Um, did it in Nottingham and bought a house for fifty. Yeah, yeah. Nottingham's yeah. been and gone. North, now. North yeah. Notts, so Mansfield, mm -hmm. and all those, and then, then into South Yorkshire, and now now we're um, uh, you know Manchester Leeds. Greater Manchester, out of Leeds, Bradford, all the, and Halifax, all those areas, uh, and the north east as well. I'm just going to reach ready week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, north east, um, and you've got Newcastle, Hartlepool, Middlesbrough, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the next. Just see. Has that changed anything? How is that, guys? Sound back? Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Change the USB. Do you know what I did? I didn't. Sorry about that. The fact I just, I just unplugged it and plugged it back in again. Which <laughs> we pay an IT guy a load of money, yeah. and every time I call him, he just say, it. just, just unplug it, plug it back in again. That's what I did. I want to watch the whole um, documentary series on a, a. a billion pound nuclear powered um, 
what are they call the aeroplanes take off when they're fighting aeroplanes? You know, aircraft carrier. Yeah, aircraft carrier. Yeah. And halfway through, it's like a drone and everything. All the lights go off and turn on. The thing is, did you just turn it off and turn it back on? The whole ship. Like, yeah, that's what you did. That's what you did. Yeah, that's how you fix everything. Pow, pull, pull. Power on, power off. Right, so where were we? We were talking about uh, different trends. Sorry for the interruption. So, talk about regeneration areas. Areas that, so we're picking up on an area that's um, not just maybe up north and taking advantage of that trend, but there are specific pockets. One, I mean, Nottingham jumps to mind. Ten years ago, there were so many cranes in Nottingham, loads of planned admission, and that, you know, we're not just Nottinghamshire and the northern bit was going up, but certain pockets of Nottingham were really getting some money spent. Areas of Stoke now are having the same thing. Oh my God, there's a whole yeah. website about investing in Stoke. Yeah. 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 Um, so you start to look at different areas. I think that one of the hottest places, it's coming from a very, very, oh, that's a bit rude. It's coming from a low base. Um, well, there's nothing there, it's an, it's an old industrial site, but some, some of the areas in the northeast are, it's an industrial wasteland. Yeah, and they're just areas that have been forgotten yeah, for a long time. Ten years yeah. from now, it'll be uh, full of Barrett homes and Wimpy homes. It'll yeah, just be nice. Exactly. It's, part of, it's part of the seaside. It's, it's, nice, a, it's a nice it's area. Like, it's like what's happened yeah. in the old mining communities, yeah. isn't it? Um, one of the guys who works in our office lives in what was the, the, the pit, the entrance to the to pit, the, yeah. is, is is nine the, yeah. houses, yeah, 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 yeah. and he lives in one of them. Yeah. And I remember driving past that area fifteen years ago when I lived close to there, and it was all rows of houses boarded up. Yeah, it was dead. Yeah. it's just off the motorway, so it's perfect location. It's literally two minutes drive yeah. from the M1. Yeah, and now it's all just new built houses. Yeah. So find the areas of regeneration um, and look out for them. That, and don't be scared. If you get in early, like if you'd have bought those boarded up houses, that would probably have been a bit too early. Mm, maybe. Yeah. But just as you they see, might them, have even flattened all of them and built on them. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. I've not been up there for a long time. Um, but in Stoke, we were buying uh, houses very cheap when um, we knew what the plans were, and but the houses that we were buying, they were 35, 40,000 pounds, which is very, very, very cheap. They're not even even cheap house now, 60, 70, isn't it? Yeah, but, yeah, um, but you know, there were still needles on the floor and, and, and it, was, it, was, it was a bit rough. Mm -hmm. um, but it literally took, we, we knew that this 13 million pound injection was coming, that was going to be knocked down, that was going to be made into a park, this was going to be boarded up, whatever, whatever. You could just tell what was going to happen. And this bit over here was quite nice. And actually, this bit in the middle just wasn't and you could tell it was going to be changed so um yeah there's definitely areas like that up north and the northeast um other thing i think is a, a thing to look at trends is areas that get selective licensing yeah love I, it love it absolutely love it and landlords that love selective licensing are few and far between i think um but we welcome uh, it. The, the, the majority of landlords that don't like selective licensing are the ones that have been in the game for a long time 20 years maybe um, when you could create a HMO that didn't need any kind of regulation at all. Uh, to book into uh, calendar, would you? So, say so really sorry, guys. If you want to book into my calendar, here's the link. Back. Oh, we're back. This is, is weird. weird. Sorry, guys. That what, is weird. What I was saying was um, in the areas where Nottingham, um, landlords in those areas that have been there for a while will complain this is just a money making scheme, blah, de, blah, de, blah. Um, I embraced it. I hadn't been a landlord for 20 years when it was. No one yeah, was yeah. monitoring what I was doing. And um, I spoke to a chap from the council after he went and inspected my house. He, he, t he told me, fantastic, great. I've, he made me change one thing in the back garden, put a little fence rail up because it was a potential trip hazard. Fine. I don't want my tenants falling over, hurt themselves, oh, especially good. if they had a young child. You, you get sued. Yeah, exactly. You get sued. Um, so, yeah, and you, he told yeah. me, a bit, he said, oh, it's really nice chatting with you. Most landlords I speak to just give me grief. They treat me like a traffic warden. Yeah. Um, and he said, there's a house down the road from yours. 
and he's gonna have something like 34 different things he's got to do to improve mm. the house and then i thought great once he's done that the value of his house goes up which makes the value of all of our houses go up love Correct. it brilliant it. great and i'm you know i've got a social conscience i want people to live in a nice house i want to live in a nice house don't i mm. if i was renting it off of me mm -hmm. i want it to be nice i have a social conscience but i'm also in, interested in my risk and i think that if you hadn't put that trip hazard thing up which is like oh i don't want to do that you're going to get sued the next tenant after he moved in mm -hmm. asked me if i could take it down because he was a bit yeah, of a yeah, nice yeah. he didn't like it i said i've got to keep it there. Yeah, i was yeah. told to put it there yeah. 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 Um, but yeah why um invest in an asset to make you some money and then leave the door open to a massive fine that can take all of your gains away or put you in prison. Don't get What's me wrong, on the flip side, we did have uh, one of our other ones, they were, <laughs> the answer went round and said, we're going to ask your landlord to put carpet up the stairs, because they're all lovely painted up, uh, it's an older house, and we're going to ask him to put a second handrail going up the stairs, because this, this house was built, the staircase was such and such degree, now new build regulations such as this, so therefore it's He said, no, don't do that, I've got a cat, all it will do is rip the new carpet to pieces. I like the the stairs, the way we painted them. And if you put another hand down, it just you know narrows it? everything. And so they, they didn't bother. They just had yeah. fun. Yeah, if you're yeah. happy, we're happy. It doesn't matter. The house, health and safety. So, you know, you can get a job's worth. Of you course can. you can in anything. But, but overall, if you, if you go in there with a positive attitude, like that situation, you they didn't put it on. They didn't. You, it, it, there, there is a bit of a conversation about that. If it was a hellhole and a death hazard, kind of you can't have that conversation. Yeah. But when we talk about identifying trends, so I said a minute ago about regeneration areas and then this idea of licensing, they are linked. So generally, licensing will come in in an area where the council feels like the standards aren't high enough. Yeah. And, and I know the areas of Nottingham where they did it, and I agree. see that. I agree. agree with yeah, that. They were. We've yeah. seen it because we've been buying in those areas for so long. We've been, mm. you know, the amount of times someone would do, one of our guys would do a view and come back and go, you're not going to believe the state of this house. I've put an offer in, there's someone living in it yeah. and it's rented. Yeah. You know, I've seen yeah. it. So it's tons of times. If you buy in an area that's got licensing, the general housing stock is going to come up and that's good. Mm. Your values will go up too. Yeah. Um, and all for doing work that you were going to or should be willing to do anyway, well, make it a decent and safe home. Um, so yeah. Now, next trend that we've identified and is, is, is in national news um, is that the fact that smaller houses are going up in value quicker than bigger houses. In fact, yeah. bigger houses are they're more, down in value. They're more affordable. That's well, why. Only like the way um, second-hand cars go up in value in times of financial yep. uncertainty because people can't afford new. Yep. So a two and three-bed house mm. has got more price pressure. They're going up quicker and faster. Um, and yeah, the, the £500,000, three-bed semi, four-bed semi, five-bed detached, depending on the area, million pound, whatever, yeah. um, are sort of languishing on the market, not moving. People are trying to sell up, move out, move downsize in makes sense as well. In, in, in if you if you had a decade of um, interest rates at 0 0.25, um, what you'll find is lots of people in an average job sat in the big house with two expensive cars in the drive that are on whatever or whatever. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everything gets turned up, she can't afford it. No. Plus, she can't afford My neighbour across the road um, put his house on a two year fix about 18 months ago, because they had an idea in two years, they were going to move to a nicer um, sort of countryside setting rather than mm. close to the city where we live. And now he's, what a stupid idea that was, because now he can't afford to do it because of the mortgage costs. Mm. And then he's, now he's going to have a higher mortgage payment. Yeah, mortgage payment, yeah. <laughs> oh, there you are. Um, so luckily, the kind of houses, the vanilla buy to let, of course it works best in a two or three bed smaller house. That's the best mm. versus, the price you pay and the rent you pay, let's say in our area, where we're just where we're sat here, if you go three miles down and look at a hundred grand house, there's still a hundred grand house over there, isn't there? Yeah, you get a thousand pound a month rent for that. Um, but for a five hundred thousand pound house, you wouldn't get five grand a month. No, so, exactly. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and the other trend is, and it's, it's sort of a, a slightly different trend. We're not talking about capital values. We're talking about uh, rent. Rent trend. The trend for rents going up is well, it's been it's been incredible over the last. Um, two two years in particular, and year it's, it's almost like a hockey stick. It's gone up. Mm. Uh, rents have risen incredibly. So when we're talking about vanilla, they're, they're 
flatter, they're flatter. I, I think they are now. I, I think, think they're, they're about they're starting, they're about there. Yeah, they've gone up a lot. Yeah. So much so that our annual rent increase for the last three years has just looked silly. Mm. You know, um, imagine putting £300 on a rent one year and then £200 the next year and £150 the year after. It's like, wow. Yeah. Again, it's a backdrop of the average rent increase being £25 to £50 for the decade before that. That's what this inflationary pressure, cost of living crisis, whatever, whatever you want to call it, has done. You know, inflation has put rents up, whether it's cost, cost pull inflation or cost push inflation. I don't know, but mm-hmm. rents have gone up. Um, so, yeah, rent, rents made a massive difference. Now, when we were saying that vanilla buy to let, that going back to the, the previous section when we talk about strategies and this, this sort of rush panic idea that you just wanted to increase your income, your yield, because otherwise you, you know, it didn't work. Um, interest rates coming down made vanilla buy to let work again. The rent increases didn't just make it work, work again. It also passed, that's part of the equation. Your profit at the end of the month is the, the big two levers are rent going up and your mortgage costs coming down. Now, versus three years ago, Mortgage rates are higher now than they were three years ago. Oh. But rents so are rents. higher too. Mm. But rents have gone up by more percentage wise and margin wise than the mortgage than the costs. Financing costs. We're yeah. better off. Guys, you're better off. In vanilla buy to lets, yes, interest rates are four and a half, five percent, whatever, payable, not interest rates, pay pay rates. Um, but your rents have gone up by more than your mortgage has gone up. And I'm seeing it in my portfolio now. Um Bit of a squeaky bum moment 18 months ago when I was on some standard variable rates because they were like, oh, you know, going up. Then all of a sudden, rent, rents go up behind it. It's oh, that's not bad, man. That's, that's okay. And now rents are still up here and still going. And I've still got a, a batch of Section 13 rent increases to come in the next three to six months as a batch, and that'll go up. So right now, it's not looking great on, some, on that batch of properties, but I've got another £150 a month on all of those to go. And guess what? My interest rates payable coming down. The refinances I'm doing um, are, are coming down. I'm getting 4.7s, 4.8s, 4.9s. Great, making more money. So there, there's some good trends. Yeah, up north, buy the right right house in the right areas, a regeneration areas, licensable areas, generally smaller houses, which is what a buy to let, vanilla buy to let is. And the trend that rents, particularly on smaller houses, again, are going up. All good stuff. Yeah, agreed. So final thing, we want to talk about minimising the, sorry, maximising the income and minimising the risk. Um, to go on, how can we do that? Well, there's lots of ways. There's a few ways. Um, I think we've got seven different bullet points. Huh? Yeah, we have. <laughs> and as I touched on it earlier, um, buy the right house to begin with. Yeah. Um, make sure it's in the right area. You know what it's going to rent for. Try and buy something where you can add value straight away. Create equity from the outset. That gives you lots of risk if, prices fall a little bit you've built yeah. it in already day one equity yeah. is a really good way to de-risk something so buy it cheap add some value somehow it could just be you don't have to you know, do a whole house renovation but just you know you buy it cheap you fix the kitchen do this do that as long as you you know putting fixing all those things right puts 10 grand in the value but it only costs you two and a half thousand pounds that, that's, a, that's a chunk of equity you've created mm. and that really helps um yeah maybe you will do a whole house renovation you know, buy refurbish rent refinance is, is a strategy and that's the that's the best way to create any any real equity because the likelihood you're going to buy something cheap that's worth a lot more than what you're paying for it is low mm-hmm. that's not much mm-hmm. happening mm-hmm. to that happening so yeah um second point yep don't over leverage yourself and that might be in terms of your portfolio in general or just buying a house don't go crazy with mm. financing options of bridging loans and things yeah, if you're uncertain really of what you're doing really get yourself in the right mess yep be really careful keep a big spreadsheet of all the properties all the loans <clears throat> keep an individual loan to value and keep an overall loan to value um yeah we, we've seen hmo clients in particular take really big loans on a commercial valuation yeah get all their money out and no and cash then, flow and no cash flow yeah um, and i think you do need cash flow the right the properties that we buy i want a single let property to make 250 pound net net which means it needs to make about 300 and three to 300 because you know, avoids bad debts, maintenance, and all those sure. things, and then the net net will be about two fifty. Um, two two five might be okay in this environment, knowing that my mortgages are coming good in the next year. That that, that might be right, but somewhere around that, 
and you know lots of vanilla vitalettes come in at 100 pound 50 quid you remember that service charge and you know all those things yeah. so you know you've got to really make sure that that is the rent they are the costs some of it's got to be um getting the right costs how many how many people pay 50 50 quid a month for all the things that we get for 25 you know for, yeah it avoids bad debts maintenance or insurance costs or rent and legal costs you can overpay for this stuff and it all adds up you know if you're paying two pound fifty a week for that or three pound fifty a week over the year it makes a difference if you've got five or six different things mm -hmm. so all those monthly costs management fees avoids bad debts maintenance insurances rent and legal insurances if you're going to have them make sure you're getting the absolute best value Indeed. um accountancy costs bookkeeping costs all those kind of things add up you know so make sure it's all tight you know, don't be tight about it just be well managed you don't mm -hmm. want to penny pinch and get bad service or bad products or yeah but um yeah make sure you're, you're hot on it um next one is get the right tenant the right management and don't try and do it yourself is obviously what I that that's the key thing that reduces your hassle. Don't, don't try and do it yourself because you'll get the wrong tenant and you'll do the wrong management. Mm -hmm. Which is hassle yeah. and risk. Yeah. The amount of like, in fact, I, 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 I would turn that around. I would say, don't do it yourself. Make sure you use an agent that gets you the right tenant and the right management. Um, I, 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 can I say never? You know, the amount of self, we, we, as a, we're a letting agent. Um, so self-managing landlords, the DIY landlords are stopping and they're coming to agents because the amount of risk that's in there, the amount of legislation, they're starting to realise they need, they need an agent. And I don't think, I mean, there's, there's a variable, there's, there's some that are getting pretty close, but there's some most way off. Landlords that are DIY and coming to us and we do a check sheet, you know, these mm -hmm. are the things that you need to have right. If we'd have managed this from day one, this is your check sheet, your compliance, your legislation check sheet, your dash, decent saving homes check sheet, your perfect paperwork checks. No DIY landlord has got close to being perfect. Craig's work, uh, operations um, director for lettings, he'll say it needs to be immaculate, guys. That's what he's talking about to our team. It's got to be immaculate. What it basically means is there's absolutely no room for error, nothing. Like we know the 27 different things that need to be ticked. Not good enough to have 25 or 26. It's got to be 27. Mm -hmm. It's got to yeah. be immaculate. Yeah. And, and that's his zero tolerance policy on that. The average landlord would tick four five of them some of them will send you to prison or yeah. cost they'll, you money. Uh, they'll, they'll all have the time getting below market rent yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah absolutely mm -hmm. below market rent chapter so, two is the next point is it keep your rent at market rent and rent. regularly review it if you're going to maximize vanilla by to let the easiest way to put the strawberry sauce on the top is to make sure your market rents market rent and not, what percentage of diy landlords who don't use an agent who aren't at market rent is mm -hmm. pretty much all of them 90 yeah something every, percent every every landlord landlord i've ever met yeah is self-managing a portfolio has got uh, some of those houses on yeah. market rent. yeah do you know what i've got an embarrassing confession i'll, I'll say i'll do now um i've got some commercial properties in my portfolio and i'm not a commercial landlord um i don't really understand it i like i like buy to let vanilla residential stuff i understand it i think um when it comes to financing the commercial stuff i always found it hard work the yields aren't there it's just not what we do um and i've got some of that stuff in the portfolio because it came with some you know it's a, it's a shop under block if that's whatever, whatever so i've got a number of commercial tenants mm. guess what i haven't done a rent increase for 10 years I don't, even, I, don't even, I don't even understand it, I don't even know it, I don't even think about it. It's like looking through the spreadsheet of, oh yeah, forget about that, that's been really well. How do you even do it? So that little block in my mind, yeah, yeah. Um, I've now, we've got a guy that does it and I put in the email, it never happened again. It's now on an automatic thing, Emma can contact him, that's okay. so, you know, so it's all. And if I'd have left it managed over there, but I've been clever dick and managed it myself through the company I own, but not put the process in to do the um, the rent increase, so it didn't happen. I've been missing out on about twenty grand a year. Ah, oh, you call yourself a letting agent? Yeah, well, you're not that's the problem. You're yeah, not letting. Well, well, that is you just the, letting agent. It's the classic mistake. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't make it on, on any of the residential stuff because it's all baked into our process. Exactly. But this bit wasn't. So unless it's baked into the process. It sounds easy, just keep on top of market rents. It's not quite as easy, and you've got to do it, and you've got to remember to do it. And there's so many other bits like that to keep on top of 
um, legislation. So go on, what else? Other ways to minimise risk. So we've got make sure your compliance is watertight, obviously. Don't spend uh, all the time, money and effort and risk it all on the rent repayment order. Make sure you've got a landlord licence, for example. Yeah. Um, we said that for quite a few times. If you're trying to you know, build something now, it, it's with that unseen thing. So to maximise your yield, don't pay a big fine. Yeah. It's one of those things where oh, I'm never going to pay a big fine. It doesn't happen. It'll never happen to me until it does. And then when you've got a 30 grand fine, well, that really impacts your yield over the next decade. <laughs> so, you know, but it'll never happen to you. It won't if you've got a good agent that's doing um, doing everything right. So make sure it's all watertight, immaculate, like uh, our ops uh, director would say. I'll put another one here, which is in, in order to reduce the hassle, to maximise it um, and minimise the risk, have a 24-7, 365 day a year phone line. If you, you, you're by obliged law, to have you're obliged. Anyone. Most landlords who DIY it don't know that they have to answer the phone at two o'clock in the morning on Boxing Day. Otherwise that tenant can, probably won't, but can start to mm. sue them and all sorts of stuff. So well, if yeah. water's going everywhere in a burst pipe, yeah. okay. it's, it's in your interest, it's in your interest, it's your yeah. property. Yeah. 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 So um, set that up. Again, you're gonna, it's not you, it's not you, is it? it yeah. you reduce your risk, reduce your hassle, get a good managing agent. Um, two other ones here, and they're big ones. Always have a mortgage broker and do an a regular review. I wouldn't even. It's got to be an annual review, but it's more than that. It's uh, flagging up when a product's coming to an end. I've got a great big mm -hmm. spreadsheet now. Um, that spreadsheet. Have you seen my spreadsheet? Yeah, honestly, it's incredible. Uh, but that spreadsheet is available to all our clients now. So our preferred mortgage broker will stick it all in there, and you will. It's this dashboard. It just flashes the right colours at the right time, and they're monitoring it, so it flags up on their dashboard. So they'll call you, send the email. You've got three months to sort this out. I've done the research. Here it is. Choose. Say yes. It just makes it so easy yep. and it stops things screwing up. Get ahead of the curve with your mortgages. If you yep. your mortgage broker will know that rents are going to rise before you know they're going to rise. Yep. So I took a hit on a refinance. I paid an early repayment charge on one to get onto a rate that I knew was going to be better than what the market rates would be <clears throat> when the, my initial... Um, fixed period ended in like seven months later and so it's that paying that erc maybe, maybe saved yeah, me yeah. but going on to you know crazy yeah that was like a year ago you you're know, you're busy you wouldn't have done that maths oh, you wouldn't have been able to do that yeah yeah I, I i get it it's like when it's, when it's presented in front of you and i'm still looking at it and i am like, oh, not sure what to work out and charlotte or one of the, uh, the team will say it's this 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 and this mm. why because of that and that'd be three percent of that to make out 400 yeah. pounds and that's Five grand over this and that. Well, she knew. She just knows the She knew that my fixed period was coming to an end six months time, mm -hmm. and contacted me then and said, "Right, this is what you got to do." Yeah, save me loads. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, final thing I got down here. It's a big one. Uh, again, it's one of those ones where dead easy to do it. Actually, that's not dead easy. It's dead easy not to do it. To do it takes a little bit of effort and thinking about. And once it's done, it's done. It's tax planning. Make sure your tax that you're paying, whether it's. Um, income tax, capital gains tax, corporation tax, dividends, um, even inheritance tax all the way down the line. But make sure you think about it. Get some people involved, get advisors involved to minimise the tax because, you know, vanilla by to let with all the sauce on top and all that that we've made it, well, this is looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then bang, goes 40% on this and actually it's yeah. got all the way back down to vanilla. All the sauce that you put on top been taken off. Tax man licked it off. So... Get good tax advice. Um, I was going to say, you've just done it, Lauren. If you want to have a chat about any of those things, book a call with me. Um, you, there's a link to my calendar. Q&A. Um, good time that suits you. Any, um, any burning questions? Yeah, got? so I noticed a few comments come in. So if you want to scroll up. So um, let me, um, can you read those? They were putting me off because I was reading them. Can you read that? I can. Wow. Wow. My, well, you're my eyes are still good. You're going to have to read it. <laughs> Scroll down for me. I'll tell you where to stop. Oh, Jesus. I can't even read that. Go on. Right. right. Uh, that big, long one. Right. Stop there. Yeah. That's perfect. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to read it out and then we'll we'll talk through it. So Anthony, thanks for some comments. How you doing? Well, we spoke on the phone, didn't we? About a month ago. Um, so because of the renters reform bill, all of our buy to lets that are suitable uh, are changing to service accommodation. Those that were not suitable have been sold and replaced by buy to lets in Europe, which has been very successful. If they use planning and over-regulation to sabotage service accommodation, we'll sell those and replace with properties in Europe. Mm. Um, 
what we'll not do is continue with Five Second UK. So that's more of a, a opinion and statement than a question. Um, I've got some thoughts around it. Yeah, interest rate. Uh, sorry, uh, exchange rates would be the thing for me. The hassle of travelling and managing it would be a thing for me. Yeah, um, you're very far away from it, and it's what, a different country, different language. Things could change. Might, might work. Yeah, it might work now, but yeah. who knew, how do you know that the country in Europe isn't going to? Bring in a whole raft of legislation exactly. and stuff. Exactly. The variables you're trying to get away with could always be there. I'd be interested in seeing the numbers because yeah. those properties that you in Europe, purchase price, rent, the yield, could you find a place in the UK that would take away the exchange rate hassle and the legislation and the language and all those other variables, but actually the numbers would look very similar uh, in, in the UK. I would disagree with the idea that over-regulation or, you know, go on, reread it. I really can't read it. Re-read, uh, but what, um, the, if, 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 if there's loads of regulations to service the accommodation now, because it's got oh, service accommodation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, now. But just make sure that your service accommodation is up to the standard. I was going to say, problem. it's not over-regulation when it's going to be safe for fire and yeah. risk and all those things. Now, you might see that as a hassle, a cost, um, something that's making it less attractive to you. For me, I look at a business and say, well, look, if that's being required of me, I've got, I, I want to do it because I don't want to be sued. I don't want, yeah. I don't want to, um, somebody in my whole holiday let to be electrocuted or burned to death. We, stayed in, I mentioned, we stayed in a holiday in Derbyshire. The bedroom didn't have charge restrictors on the window. My daughter was, cr- it had a really high window sill, a bit like the one in this room actually. Mm-hmm. And she jumped up onto it off the bed because the bed was because the bed yeah, jump on the yeah, bed frame yeah, up onto yeah, yeah. that, and she wasn't she she wasn't trying to open the window. But yeah, I well. thought to myself, hmm. there was no charge. She could have plummeted straight down into yeah. the, into the driveway. Yeah. Um, why is that a bad thing to have that regulation brought in? I think it's good, and it's dead easy to fix it. Yeah. Or or if you're not prepared or don't want to be looking after that kind of risk, don't do it. Yeah. Do something else. It hasn't got it. Buy to let. It's a load less. Um, uh, obligations. So yeah. another one into the end. Trust rates are only part of Seriously, that was. Ah, we're back. We're back. We're back. Now that was a. Um, I can see the dog just went on the wire. That's, I think we just need a new wire, Lauren. I think that is that wire. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's loads of things that are outside your control. Yeah. Life is generally. I mean, it just is. There's there's so many things that you can't um, you can't manage. Um, shouldn't try to, but you can definitely reduce. Um, same oh. again, Anthony. Sounds like you don't want to be a landlord. Anyway. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's cool. In... Uh, how do you mitigate risk in areas where a licensing conditions makes landlords criminally responsible for the behaviour of their tenants, their guests, and visitors? Yeah, it's true. And um, uh, councils have tried to make um, uh, antisocial behaviour and having a management plan part of a licensing condition. There's not been any, uh, not that I know of, there's not been any um, uh, prosecutions criminally. There's been fines and there's been bits and bobs. Um, but the honest answer is you do the very best you can. You make sure your insurance covers it, mine does. Uh, I've got properties in areas where that is, in theory, my liability. Um, I have a decent safe home, mm-hmm. I manage it well. I don't, I deal with we're getting more and more council letters. We're noticing that. I get probably two or three a month. Yeah, I've got a big portfolio. I get two or three a month. That seems a bit excessive for them. I moment. know how you can be. But they just get. I know how you just can get, get rid of that problem straight away. What? Put the right tenant in it to begin with. The right then you won't have those problems. Yeah. Right, right tenant in the right house. If your house is not. Just, I'm not talking about you, Anthony, personally, but if your house is not very nice, is not is a bit run down, and you've got the wrong tenant, you're going to invite problems. Mm. Just make sure you're not that landlord, I guess. Um, how do you, don't know how you do your maths, but when my interest rates went from 1.9 to 6, my monthly mortgage payments went up by you know, massively. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you how I did that. I refinanced 
before my fixed term was up because my mortgage mm. broker could see that I was probably going to be put in a position similar to that. So I got onto a three point something, 3.8, six months before my fixed term ended um, to avoid going to 6% in when it did end. And yes, okay, I paid a bit of an early repayment charge, but not much because I was in the final year of my fixed term. And um, I avoided that headache because I didn't want that, but I wouldn't have done that if my mortgage broker hadn't come to me with it. So mm. that's, that's how I got around that. Um, you've got any thoughts on that? Because you've, you've, you obviously you've got a, a lot of houses. You're you would have been impacted by variable rates going up, and you know yeah. how did you get around that? So I didn't have many at two percent, one point nine five. Yeah, because you're already a large professional yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, so that yeah, um, I've got some right right now. This second, I'm paying nine percent off. Right, nine percent. They still make money every month. I mean, I wish, wish I wasn't paying nine percent. The plan is to refinance them in the next two to six months, depending on how they fall. I left them on a standard variable rate for a little bit longer to, because I knew the rates were coming down. I could have fixed for two years at 7%, but I let mm-hmm. it run at nine, mm-hmm. knowing that and we did the maths to make it work. I, mean, I wish it wasn't like that, but that was a, um, you know, and, and they still make a bit of money, not a lot, but a bit, because we put the rents up and they were the right house in the right area already. They already had a decent yield profile at the, at the time, because we, we built the portfolio with the right stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's something you've got to manage. Um, I don't think I'm going to be paying 6% on anything two years from now. No. I'm, as soon as I can hit five, 4.75, I'm going to lock it all in for probably five years. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, there's a couple I won't because there's some stuff where, um, I've got another load of equity to come out as well. So. Sure. Yeah. We did it again. Yeah, oh, Anthony's providing loads of content. I like this. Right, cool. Thanks for these comments. Right, nothing to do with fire regulation or any other regulations. My properties exceed all current standards. So how do I take away risks with not being able to control your property? Mm. What what uh, what are you feeling out of control about? Which bits? Um. So what? Yeah, if your houses are great, what, what's your biggest worry? Mm. Not being able to control. Mm. So, I don't know. Uh, it, if I'm not happy with something, I don't do it. Hmm. I feel, Whatever I feel, that is. I, I feel in, yeah. I, of course, there's things that are in your control, things that are outside your control. And um, there are things that are not immediately in your control, but mm. could be, you know, like if I have a tenant that doesn't pay, that's not within my control. But within three months, I can kick them out and get everything done. So that, that bit is in my control. Ultimately, you don't own anything, do you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll take it with you when you die. <laughs> the king owns the land under this house, as in every other place in the country. Yeah. yeah there's all sorts of stuff that's outside your control. Um, you've got to do the best you can, haven't you? Um, you can evict tenants if they are a problem, Anthony. Being able to evict, yeah, 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 you can always, I mean, if you feel like you can't evict a tenant. You evicted a tenant last week. I'll evict she went kicking and screaming because I heard the guys talk about it, but she got evicted. Yeah, there's, and there's... That wasn't a long drawn out process. There's no tenant I can't get out in two months. Yeah. And, yeah. and that is... We watched it happen. I, I was on the phone. I was listening to the guys on the phone. Yeah. It was a bailiff one. The bailiffs were there. One of our letting um, mm-hmm. team was there. Mm-hmm. She was on the phone. It was the first time she'd had to be in an eviction scene because we don't see it very often. But she was saying the woman's refusing to come out. She's this, she's that in the end. Mm-hmm. If, later, you, sure. if you can't evict a tenant, there's something that's not right. So uh, there's outstanding maintenance. You haven't paid attention to the Deregulation Act and served the right paperwork. You haven't registered the deposit. Um, mm. There's if you've something. Got the right house is all perfect. The perfect paperwork. Everything's in place. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you've done nothing wrong your side, you can evict a tenant. Always. Easily. If Absolutely. they're not paying or they're whatever it is they're doing. Yeah. Section 8, Section 21, whatever it is, we'll get it to court within two weeks. Um, might be four, but we'll get everything ready mm. to go. Um, that one time, I'm, I'm, I'm like, it, it, it was quite interesting, that one. Six last weeks. Week, the, uh, Six weeks. The bailiff was refusing to do anything because the tenant had a dog. Had a dog. Yeah. He was scared of the dog or yeah. something. Yeah. No. One phone call. One phone call, all sorted, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah done. Turn it out. And um, I've actually, I've, I've got another one. Um, in the pipeline as well. And again, I mean, these are the only two in the last 
five years from me, I think. It's not very but they're common. both they're not very common at all. But yeah, another one, no problem at all. Um, because everything's right. I have seen some landlords make a right hash of it, and I've got some mm -hmm. we've got landlords that come to us, we need to serve. Well, actually, you didn't register the deposit, you need a license, you haven't got one, and the tenants reported maintenance that you haven't done. Oh, when your EPC's out of date, you never gave it when you can't evict. It's impossible, it's absolutely impossible. If the council get involved, they'll make you fix all the things, pay the rent back. Oh, it gets an absolute nightmare. Avoid doing all those things. Mm. Just avoid it. Just don't don't do it. Do it right from the day one. That is the way to de risk it. Um, we manage those things with the click of a button. Exactly. Done. Cool. Right. All done. Read the rented reform bill. Once I could evict, but now I won't be able to. It's virtually impossible. No, no, no. Disagree completely. It will be. Um, the, 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 for, it's, it's not in. It, it's coming. Um, but they're talking about strengthening the courts. Um, changing section 21 but beefing up um, section 8 you'll still be able to evict for all the reasons that you want to evict mm. um, I've got no problem with it whatsoever the blueprint please, I'm going to say this and I, please don't take it the wrong way I think I'm being flippant or anything but if you really don't enjoy being a landlord don't, don't, be, don't a landlord. be a landlord yeah. if you've been a landlord for a long time you'll have some great equity in your houses mm. someone will want to pay good money for them mm. You the, know, the blueprint for embrace what embrace the changes and make the most of the what, opportunities that are out there is what all I would say. Yeah, yeah. It, it's Scotland, by the way. So the blueprint for it is Scotland, mm. in, and all those things are in in Scotland. And it's um, it's made a difference to your ability to evict. Um, yeah, not it, it will definitely scare off some landlords. Uh, the number of landlords in their fifties refinancing and rebuying has dropped off a cliff in the mm -hmm. last however long because yeah those kind of things are potentially scary if you don't look into when you know, read the renters reform bill and uh, part of property mark and uh, you know, got some knowledgeable contacts as a letting agent this is one of the reasons that landlords are coming to us because they need to understand those things but you, know, you get it get immaculate is the word you get it immaculate and you'll have no problems whatsoever um people are leaving the market it's an opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, big time. Yeah. All right, cool. we've kept everyone too long anyway. Well, well um, let's, um, yeah. it's quarter to two. So thank you for everyone for staying. Um, feel free to, to drop me a line, adam at forthelandlords.com. You can book a call there. There's a link there. We'll leave that there for a few seconds. Um, so don't close the meeting down just yet. But again, thanks, guys. Been good. Have a nice evening. <laughs>